Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint some feathers. We're going to keep them super simple, make it easy for beginners. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man in chat tonight, so if you've got questions while I'm painting, you can ask those and I'll try to answer them. Let's get started. All right, so welcome to our channel. If you're new to here, we're gonna be going over some materials real quick here, and then I'm gonna be showing you step-by-step -step how to do this uh, painting from start to finish. Uh, we're, I've, I've, I've been wanting to do feathers for a while now. Uh, I really like them. I know they're kind of, uh, they look hard, but I, I promise you I'll show you how to do them fairly simple. Um, I've got a nine by 12 inch Belgian linen canvas board here that we'll be using. Uh, tonight so you can use really any size canvas you want and you could you could separate these out into separate canvases if you wanted to do one large feather uh, down on, you know on multiple canvases that would be cool whatever you want to do there's really a, endless options with this one um, you're going to want a large brush of some sort for your background so I'm going to use a uh, number two aspen these are Princeton brushes and a number 12 bright for some of the colors on the background. Not gonna get super detailed with the background. Um, and then we're also gonna use a sponge and possibly like just a paper towel. So if you don't have a fancy sponge, you can just use, uh, this is a sea sponge. Um, you can just use a paper towel for it. And we're just gonna put a little bit of texture on that background um, of the canvas. And then you're gonna want some sort of brush that's got some sort of fuzzy edge. So um, if you've got like a uh, Filbert Granier, that's one uh, brush that we can use for it. I've got an eighth inch and a half inch sizes here. Could show you, you know, the different sizes that they come in. This is a select from Princeton um, in the blue handles. Uh, I also, if you've got a fan brush that's not too curved, so this one is like straight across. If you can see that, um, this one will actually do really well for those feathers too. Uh, so this is number two fan in the Princeton Select. And then this was just an old scruffy brush that I have. And something like this can work as well because uh, once I'll show you how to kind of create your own rake brush with this one. We'll cut it down um, a little bit and um, try to shape it out so that we can use it for some of the brush strokes that we're gonna be doing. And then you're gonna want um, for like the center, uh, center lines of the feathers, you're going to want a uh, round brush. So I've got a small number uh, zero Umbria round, um, just something small that you can um, create those lines with. You can also do them with an angle brush. So you can uh, use the edge of an angle brush or a flat brush for that. So I've got a quarter inch and a three eighths inch angle brush uh, for some of the filler details and things. And then I've also got a uh, dagger striper, which can also work for um, any of that. So if you've got some of these brushes, you can grab them. If you don't have them, really the only two that you really need is either like a fan or um, or a round brush of some sort. And maybe uh, if you've got an angle, that'll help too. But what were you left about there? Our cat. What did she do? Just, she's all cuddled up now right in front of my computer. I know. Sorry, go on. Okay. Uh, so thank you to Fredericks and Princeton, our brush and canvas sponsor. I'm gonna go over our colors. Got carbon black, burnt umber, burnt sienna, quinacridone burnt orange, yellow oxide, quinacridone magenta, ultramarine blue, cobalt teal, unbleached titanium and titanium white, and then this is zinc white. Or no, I'm sorry, this is not zinc white. This is glazing medium, sorry. So used to saying that. Um, use whatever colors you want to, really. You can um, use, feathers are really fun because they come in all kinds of colors and things. So you uh, you don't have to use these colors. Use whatever colors you've got. I'm kind of keeping them sort of neutral. I'm just going to use a color mainly in the background. The feathers themselves are going to be neutral browns and a little bit of gold, and that's it. So, all right, let's start painting here. So I'm going to start out with the large flat brush, and I'm just going to put out some white and I'm going to put it on fairly thickly, and then we're going to kind of lay the color on top um, of it while it's wet. So I'm going to grab a pretty good amount of that white, maybe a little bit of the unbleached titanium, so it's got a little bit of a tint to it. 
a little bit of the glazing medium will just help it go on smoother. And then um, depending on the kind of canvas you're using, if it's really heavily textured, you for sure want to use a little bit of water on your canvas. Uh, it doesn't take much. Don't overdo it. Um, but I just kind of smush it around and then that way, make sure your hands are clean when you do that. Um, that way, um, it kind of activates the fiber in the canvas. These canvas boards are not as porous, so you don't have to do it, but it still helps a little bit to be able to smooth that paint out. It's kind of like a Wonder Twin I powder. I had something on my hand because it, yeah, exactly. Activate. Activate. Hey, I love that show. Real, real <laughs> quick, somebody asked, what's the difference between carbon black and regular black? Uh, it's just the name of the black, so it's just a a, a black um some Mars black, ivory black, they all have different names. So some, if you've got a black that just says black, just use that. that that's fine. Um, but yeah, it's just the name of it. Carbon black's got a little bit of a gloss. So if you're not into that, you can use like Mars black or something like that. Mars black is probably the closest cousin to carbon black. Ivory black's a little bit less uh, tinted, um, a little bit more... Um, find it's a little bit more um, transparent. Okay, so really quickly, just put all those colors on there and then I'm gonna grab my sponge here. I've already wet it down, so it's just slightly damp here and I'm going to run it in that white and then grab some of the cobalt teal. I'm gonna grab a little bit more of those. Get a fairly, not too much paint on there. You can see it's just kind of barely on there and I'm gonna start Dabbing that on. Get it a little bit darker. I can add a little bit of burnt sienna. What the burnt sienna will do is just tone it down and make it look a little bit more natural. So you could also tone it down with um, like an orange or yellow, or not yellow, um, an orange or reddish color too. But that burnt sienna has got a lot of, lot of red in it, so. It's a good color to do. So you can see it's just very subtly tinting that background. It's a little bit of color. Me work fairly quickly here, so don't. And if your white is drying, just let it dry completely. And you can always do this again later. So you can do this after at any point. Um, if you're wet, if your white is already dry, just let it dry. If it starts to get sticky, um, you'll be able to tell too. And you can, it'll it'll start to lift off the canvas if it gets too sticky, or you can kind of feel it when you're setting this down. If, if the paint is not laying down smoothly and it's kind of getting tacky, then um, you want to stop because you don't want to mess with acrylics while they're drying. They, they'll they fight you. And are you using QBO? No, not yet. I'm using burnt sienna here. Okay, but, okay. Because somebody asked about... Yes, I've got burnt QBO on the canvas, but okay. I don't have, I'm not using it yet. All right, because they asked if they didn't have it. You could mix it with CAD Red Light, burnt sienna, and a little bit of quinacridone magenta. Right. Sorry. That's okay. It's one of those colors that's not, it's not, uh, you know, necessary not to this. Has. Yeah. Right, yeah. So burnt sienna is a decent substitute. It's just got a little bit more of a, of a um, prettier tone, you know. Okay, so I I mixed a little bit of the quinacridone magenta with this color that we were using in our background, that teal color, and I'm going to use that at the bottom here. And I added a little bit more of the whites too. So this is still, still damp. You can make this background as dark as you want. Um, our feathers are going to be fairly dark on top, so you just want to have contrast, you know. So um, just keep that in mind when you're doing this. You, if you keep it kind of a medium tone um, not, and you don't go too dark or too light with it, then uh, it will it will uh, show your feathers just fine. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Now, um, if you wanted to, uh, before we pass it off to Mark here, you can get a paper towel just slightly damp. It doesn't really need You can keep it dry even if you want to. Um, and do, let's do some of the, I'm going to get a little bit of blue for this, just a little bit of the ultramarine blue. And I'm going to just sop up basically everything that's left on my palette here. 
with this and I'm just gonna add just an, introduce another color. You can see how that paper towel just kind of gives it a little more interesting look there. The and you can move, you know, change the change the scrunch on it so that it creates a different, you know, part change, pattern. I never heard of that phrase. Change the scrunch. Change the scrunch. <laughs> I just made it up. Nice. It, there should be a t-shirt. Right. Make some t-shirts. And, and I was want, wanting to know, does it matter what sea the sponge comes from? I don't think so. Okay, just <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> oh, you want me to take that and leave? <laughs> okay, got the, I got the hint. <laughs> yeah. All right, so while that's still wet there, before Mark takes it off to dry, I'm going to go ahead and just grab a little bit of the, I'm going to use up the rest of that teal there. A little bit of blue in there, and I'm going to grab some brown burnt umber here. I'm just going to mix up a warm, kind of bluish brown gray color. I can add a little bit of the unbleached titanium to soften it up. Add a little bit of the glazing medium and some water and use a fan brush, whatever, uh, you can use a toothbrush, whatever you use. Um, just remember that the direction to get, it should be kind of a milk consistency. So it's actually probably still too thick. When you scrape through it, you should be able to see through to your palette. So you can see kind of how it looks like a, yeah, like a milk there. So that's where that's the consistency you need for it to be able to to drip off your um, brush. If it's too thick, it won't splatter at all. Um, and so I'm going to scoop up a fairly good amount on it, but you can you can then touch it on your paper towel uh, just to get off any extra if it's too extra. And then I'm going to tap it in the direction that. Um, I want the paint to go. So if I want the paint to go down here, I'm going to tap it straight down, hold it um, parallel to the canvas and tap straight down and let those splatters happen. Now, if I wanted to them to go in an upward direction, I could splatter that way and they would splatter that way. And if I want to go on mark, I would go <laughs> hold it like this and do it that way. No. <laughs> oh, no, but, you're not. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> she wants if I to. want really big ones, I can scoop up a pretty good amount on here and get, there we go, really big droplets. So, um, this is a good, good amount there. Okay, I'm going to give that to Mark and let him dry that. And okay. the water droplets are going to take a while. And, um, and somebody asked real quick if, uh, if they don't have, Teal can they use turquoise? Oh sure, yeah. Just cobalt teal is just turquoise. My uh, plus some um, plus a little bit of of uh, white. So yeah, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna blot. I'm just realizing this is gonna take you forever to dry. So what I'm gonna do before this dries completely here, I'm just gonna take my paper towel and lay it over carefully. Don't move it up and down any, but just set it on there. There we go. It's gonna. You're welcome. I can, I'll, I'll splatter again at the very end, but I didn't want it to be careful doing this though, because if your background is super tacky, it could lift off your background color too. So you don't want to do that, but my background was starting to be pretty solid. So there we go. Yay. That's a little bit more subtle anyways. Like it. All right. So now you're going to want to do clean off your hands. I'll show you what we did this weekend. Grab on this video from Patreon. We do a uh, bonus video once a month with our patrons. And uh, this Saturday, sun, Sunday we painted on this. This was, I don't know, about five, five and a half hours. It was actually really, really fun to paint. They went by really fast. Um, so... That information down is down in the description if you're interested in checking out our Patreon. It's Angela Fine Art on Patreon. But um, set that aside. The 
to show you how to draw the feathers. They're going to be really simple shapes. So um, basically, they're going to have a center line. Let me do them this way so that we get, get them all in here. So they're going to have a center line. It's usually kind of curved a little bit. And then the stem, uh, the center section, I don't know what it's called, quill, um, is going to narrow as it goes up. So it'll be a little bit thicker at the bottom, little slightly angled where it's been um, uh, detached. Sometimes it comes to a point, but kind of like that. And then, oh, about an inch or so up, maybe a little bit more than that, depending on the feather. You're going to, this first one is going to come out at an angle and then come out this way and then round up and then have a tapered edge up here and fairly close to the tip there. It's going to, this side is going to be much narrower and it's going to end right about here like that. Okay, and then we're going to have these. spots and things and you could leave the spots out if you just wanted to do the feathers themselves you don't have to add the, all the fancy spots and things so here's this one this one's kind of got a bit different shape and it's got some feathers kind of coming out the sides and then at the very bottom here where the there's the bottom of that this going to have some little fuzzies coming out from right there. All right, and then this one is gonna curve up and have lots of kind of really scraggly. And they're all, it's pretty equal on both sides. And it's kind of a teardrop shape almost. It narrows when it comes down here. But the outer edge, it's helpful to look at the outer edge instead of looking at it a whole as a whole. Try to kind of look at the border, like like don't even be looking at this, but look at the the background shape. And that will help you kind of shape them out a little bit better because um, you're going to have kind of a a natural um, shape memorized in your head for feathers because they're kind of pretty common. So um, in order to make sure that you're not drawing all of your feathers the same, your brain's going to try to make you do that because it's always going to try to default to the, to the um, you know, feather um, that you've got memorized in your brain from when you were, what, five, you know, and learned what it was. Um, that's one of the things about drawing. It's really not about... Um, it's not really about your skill. Um, a lot of people think, you know, oh, I can't draw. It, it has really absolutely nothing to do with how you hold the pencil or anything like that. Everybody can pretty much write. Um, and you'd be surprised at how um, easily you probably will be able to um, manage your hand-eye coordination. As long as you have good hand-eye coordination, um, you're going to be able to draw whatever you want to draw. You just have to overcome that little thing in your head that's telling you to um, see things that are not there um, or to draw things that are not there. So you've got to just kind of look at exactly what you're seeing, what you're what you're drawing, focus in on parts of it maybe even. Um, sometimes, you know, that's why that grid method works for people where you see, you know, they map out things with grids. And then that focus, that makes you focus only on that little box that you've got right here. So if you focus on little smaller areas of the feather or smoke a focus on the open areas around the object instead of the object itself. It kind of bypasses that thing in your brain that's telling you feather, feather, feather looks this way, you know, and trying to make you do it, whatever, you know, draw it exactly the way that you've got it memorized in your brain as a feather object um, or, you know, feather shape. So um, I don't know if that's helpful, but um, anyhow, I find that the right brain super fascinating it's uh it's one of the things that i that they talked about in college when i learned to draw and i never really realized it until i started to paint and draw more and then i um i i can recognize it happening and if you the more that you draw the more you'll realize in certain things you'll just have almost like a block where um there's just certain things where your head your brain is just super um focused on you know it should look like this like a tree or some for some for a lot of people it's clouds for some reason i'm not really sure 
um, why, but they have like their clouds all end up looking um, the same way, super thick, super like a certain way. Um, and it's a lot of times I think it's because that's how they kind of have it. Um, if they close their eyes and, and visualize what a cloud looks like, I, I can almost guarantee you that's what, what they're drawing or painting is going to be, you know, <laughs> it's going to be, they're trying to match it up to what their brain is trying to make them match it up to what, to what they have it saved as. Um, so anyhow, it's pretty fascinating, but, uh, but yeah, drawing, it really has a lot to do mostly with just focusing on what, focusing your eyes, really training your eyes to focus on what they're seeing and not, uh, and only drawing that, only draw what you're seeing, really go slow, take it one step at a time and um, break it down into parts and um, you will find your drawing um, improves dramatically. There's also a book that I like to, that I studied with in college that um, talked about it called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. And that I would highly recommend that book because it um, talks about all of that and it gives you like specific um practices to bypass your brains, whatever. And one of the things that they have you do, um, which is really interesting, is they have you not look at your page. And that way you can't, your brain can't override what you're seeing. And you have to look only at, and we do, it. Uh, I've done, had it, done it with some of my patrons, where they draw their hand and you only look at your hand, you do not look at your page and you do not lift your your. Um, pencil from the page and you it really makes you focus on every little bit of things that you're seeing when you can't refer to your page and when you are looking at your page and not looking at the object that you're trying to draw you're relying on your memory so it's going to be you're going to default to what your memory has stored so if you're constantly looking at the object that you're drawing and 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 always focusing back and forth and back and forth um if you get in that habit, then you're going to draw a whole lot better too. Okay. So sorry. Getting on. I don't know where I got on that kick, but I think it's helpful to, for beginners sometimes to realize that, you know, part of the process of, of painting and seeing things better is, is actually the drawing. So there we go. There's our feathers really fun. And again, most of them like this one, this one, um, this one to some extent, and this one, um, are all, kind of lopsided so one side will be thicker than the other side it won't be hard to pass my brains whatever it's a very it's a very short distance yeah okay i knew you were concerned <laughs> all right so now i've got to draw them again i don't know why i didn't just draw them on here but oh well. <laughs> i'm gonna do it all over again Let's see. Okay, now close your eyes and draw. Them. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if we if you can do it. See if I can do it. Well, I, yeah, no, I'm not going to do it. It's not. Um, it's not that. It's not. You're not when you do that process. It's not that you're trying to draw well. Like you do not do that blind. It's called blind contour drawing, where you focus only on your object. The, the the drawing is not the important thing in that. The important thing is that you're training your eye to see. So you throw out your drawings. They're not going to look good. But um, Oh, I do that anyways. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, it was cute up until about fourth grade and then after that. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. and that's about the time that you're, you start to realize that what you're drawing is not accurate. And you get frustrated. Um, so... It, that happens to a lot of a lot of kids. They around fourth, fifth grade, they start to drop out of art because they start to realize, hey, wait a minute, this isn't looking like you know reality. Like they start to realize that they're not quite hitting reality, and um, and unless you kind of can catch them and make, give them the right tools to you know continue to um, improve, they. That a lot of them give up in around that age. Well, I'm glad you did see it as a as a well as a as an art teacher. You see it pretty often. This would be a really bad channel if you had given up on art. <laughs> I, I we were just talking about that. If I hadn't, if I hadn't, our YouTube channel hadn't taken off when it did. There's a very good likelihood that I would have been just continuing to do my local classes occasionally and work in somewhere else, you know, not doing this at all. 
Yeah. All these Damn. crazy people have convinced you to keep doing this. So I love it. It's a great, it's a great gig. Somebody said I shouldn't underrate my brain because I married you. <laughs> <laughs> what said i shouldn't underrate my brain because i didn't marry you so well, there you go there you go see i i still think my parents paid her we <laughs> we were just talking about that the other day we kind of lucked out because neither we we got married so young neither one of us were really thinking about uh whether or not we would get a long long term you know as far as like being parents and stuff and all the real life stuff that happens um we got pretty lucky there Yep. Okay, so that one looks like almost like a leaf, and then this one I got too close to that one. So I'm just leaving me a little bit of space here. And then here. And also look at the tops of them. So it helps like when you're doing this to look at your reference and look at um, how look, look at the spaces in between, but also look at how they refer to one another. So once you kind of get one of them and you know you've got that the right size and it's in the right place, then you can use that point and say, okay, the top of this feather is a little bit higher than the top of this one. So I need to lower this one. And um, you can start using that as your reference and you can um, go back and forth and make sure and use it kind of as a test to see how you're doing on the rest of your drawing. Somewhere in there. I don't know why this one's being such a pain. And then this one is really tall. And then in here. And you don't have to do, I'm just using regular school chalk. You don't have to do anything major. Um, if you do it on paper like this, it makes it really easy because then you can transfer it on tracing paper and then take your tracing and use something like Sorrel paper. Um, this is a water soluble transfer paper. Um, it comes in all these different colors and um, you put that underneath. Then you put your tracing on top and then you just trace your design on it. It goes onto your canvas really easily. And then if you make a mistake there or some of it's, you know, in places that you don't want it, you can uh, wipe it off with water. It makes it really easy to do. So I would definitely suggest drawing on paper first, um, especially if you're um, going to do it yourself. I will have the traceable available. Those are also on Patreon. It's $2 a month for all the traceables that you want. It's unlimited downloads for $2 access to them. Link down below the video. Yep. Yep, yep. And there's other levels with bonus right. videos. Yeah, I showed the bonus stuff. video. Oh, yeah, that was pretty sweet. Yeah, I'm proud of that one. I I liked it. It was fun. It was fun to paint. Uh, this one, this feather is curving it towards it this. It didn't take like 12 hours, so that was good too. What? And it didn't take like 12 hours, so that's good too. Yeah, it was a shorter ish one. Some of our bonus videos have been really long lately. <laughs> okay, so I didn't end up using this brush. I'm just going to put it back because I'm not going to need it. So let me show you how to do some of the feather techniques. So um, this one, I was going to show this brush here. Where's my... So if you have an old brush like this, I never throw ever throw away any of my brushes because you always use them for other things. And um, something like this, what we can do is you can cut back most of the brush. So I'm not going to do it, but um, you would basically split that brush, kind of give it a haircut and take it and um, cut back on either side, way down low and leave just a little bit in the middle. So I would cut that much off this side and then I would cut an equal part off that side and leave just like that little bit in the middle. So there's just like a little tiny bit of the, of the, um, brush left here and cut it way down here and then you would just snip straight down into it and it's a hair cutter trick they do that when you when you cut your hair sometimes if you notice they cut straight down this way and that'll give you that kind of jaggedy edge and if if it's still too thick you can test it and see how it does if it's still too thick just keep on cutting just don't cut across just make sure you're cutting straight down this way and that way you can get, you'll get this kind of uh, an effect. 
in your brush. You can see how very thin that is. There's not very many hairs there. Um, and there's some a little bit cut a little bit shorter there. If you pull it back, you can see the shorter hairs there on the side. So you just cut, cut down the sides and then cut, cut, cut into it. And um, you can revive an old brush and make it into kind of a rake or comb or grainier. There's, they call them different things, but they're all basically the same kind of brush. Okay, so that's how to make your own. Let's see, what do I want to do here? I think I'm going to start with the fan brush here. And let's mix up some gray. I'm going to use the burnt umber in my ultramarine blue, kind of equal parts, a little bit more brown than blue here. This will make a warm gray, really pretty brown that we can use in these feathers. And when you mix up a color, mix up just what you, maybe a little bit more than you think you're going to need. And it's really easy to over mix um, colors. I think that's one thing that a lot of beginners do. They waste a lot of paint. So you can see how very little paint I'm putting out here. Um, if you find that you're using way too much paint or a lot of paint, um, a lot of times it has to do with how much water you're using on your brush. So just make sure that you're getting water, um, putting water on your brush and adding a little bit of water to your paints as you work. Um, especially with this technique that we're going to be doing with this brush, we're going to need a little bit of water in our brush. I'm going to show you on here first. Um, let me do it here. So I'm going to thin it down just like we did when we were splattering. Remember? I'm going to add just a little bit of glazing medium. That just helps the paint stick to the canvas a little bit better when we're adding so much water, especially heavy body acrylics. If you're using like a craft acrylic that's already thin, you won't have to use that much water and you won't have to add the glazing medium. or won't need it because it's mostly um, acrylic medium anyways. Okay, so there we go. So I'm going to get it super thin. And then I'm going to set my brush straight up and down. That's going to be the main main thing that you're going to need to do is, is um, keep your brush upright because the tendency is going to be to want to hold it like a pencil or something and be a little bit lazy about it and have it at an angle. And you won't get that those good lines if you do that. So you're going to have to hold it upright. It's going to feel really weird. But hold it upright and you're going to just be flicking it out along that stem. We'll fill in the middle parts. We're not really worried about this middle part. What we're worried about is these outer edges. So we want those to have that kind of fuzz, um, you know, feathered, feathery effect, right? So that's how you're going to get them is using this brush. And then we can go back in and like I said, you know, kind of fill in a little bit more. We're going to put the center line in there. Um, so let's go ahead and use this our feathers. I'm going to go ahead and use this right on this and one here first, and I'm just going to start it and, and oh, that I like that. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to fill that in. And with feathers too, the nice thing is you can kind of just let whatever happens, happens. So if you've got like these lines in here and things, leave, leave them by all means. Don't, don't uh, fix everything. Make it, let it kind of be organic embrace the embrace the mistakes ish you know whatever you're doing here if you feel like it's not quite right you can always fix it with acrylics it's pretty easy to do that so there we go um let me do this let me put in my center line so that'll help us do in the other what, side was that your fan brush the brush yes this yes, was my brush. number two fan okay oh i'm your number one fan <laughs> Thank you very much. I added a little bit of black to this color and a little bit of my blue. <laughs> I'm just going right on. I'm not even responding to you today. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. <laughs> You're trying to throw me. I know I am. He likes he likes to to mess with the right mess brain. With me. Yeah, he does like to mess with the right brain. Okay, so there we go. That that might take a little bit of practice, and I probably got it a little bit thick there at the end, but we can we can fix that. In fact, if right now, if I catch it in time, I can take some of that off with my paper towel. See that? So, got a 
a little bit thick. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and do all of my center stems while I've got this color on here. That'll kind of give us a starting point. And I'm just using the line. You, I, this one got a little bit of wiggly because I wasn't doing it. If you do it right to left, it's a whole lot easier. But then if you're left-handed, is it better right to left, left to right? I don't know. I don't know. Probably, well, however you would normally write your words. Mm. So, so I'm going to add a little other, bit of yellow to this one. People in other countries may see it differently. Because it don't some languages write from right to left? I think Hebrew does it weird differently, but <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay. I'm sure somebody in chat will let us know. Mm -hmm. Do it however is comfortable for you. That's the point. <laughs> the, moral, the moral of the story is... Mark shuts up. <laughs> are, you, are you getting that vibe? <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of picking that up a little bit over here. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. We've I been, got a lot of my brain. I'm trying to get through today. So. We've been married almost 32 years, so I kind of. I, he picks I pick, up, I pick on the, up on stuff. He's, you know, he's getting better about bit. like picking yeah. up the subliminal clues. Right. <laughs> Used to take the the clue and the stare. <laughs> now it's yeah. Just the clue. Just the clue. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these ones. Uh, I'm going to turn the brush just a little bit. So I'm kind of starting here, and then I'm going to turn it just a little bit. And that, again, might take a little practice. So practice on paper until you get comfortable with it. And these don't have to be perfect. So if you get a little bit of mistake, don't, don't stress out. Just keep on going. We can fix most everything. And even if you messed up that background area, it's so there's so much going on in that background area. You can, uh, and if you want to, you could save some of that background color um, so that if you do make a mistake with, you know, with your upper layers here, you can go back in and fix some of it. I'm going to bring this way out here. Just make sure that you're keeping the feathers going in that right direction. So they're going to go upward and, and in just a little bit. Some, some of them are going to come out and, and stay out. Go out and stay out. No. <laughs> um, like this one, you know, is kind of flying out. So um, it doesn't have to be quite perfect, but they are all kind of doing this general um, upward direction. And then I'm going to make sure that right next to the stem, there's at least a little bit of color because they're all they're they're splitting off. But the the area real close to this to the spine of the feather. Um, is going to be solid for the most part. Okay, so just going back in and filling that in. All right, so there's our first feather. We're going to add some details to it, but for the most part, it's um, that's kind of the technique that we'll be using. So let's do this other one over here that's dark also. And I'm going to use the same brown. from the outside in if I want to just kind of know wherever you're setting that brush down um, first that's where it's going to be thickest so um, I'm only wanting to do that in the areas where I know that it's going to be fairly solid so like in here and up and 
through here. This is this feather is solid on that tip. So I'm kind of just using this brush to kind of draw it in. How are you doing, hun? I'm doing okay. Good. How you doing? All right. Everybody hanging in there today in chat? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Everybody's enjoying themselves. I've been taking polls on uh, grilled cheese methods. Oh, cold pan or hot pan? Oh, I didn't ask that question, actually. I was asking mayo or butter. Oh. And then what cheeses? Gouda. Gouda? Gouda. I'm probably going to do white American on mine. Oh, yeah, you like white American. Like a processed cheese, though. I don't know that that counts as cheese. It is, it's but it's like cheese. It's childhood. <laughs> I mean, how many years did I make steak sandwiches before I remembered I liked white, white American on instead? True. But yeah, other than that, chat's doing well. Good. I kind of bringing this one out a little bit farther than it needs to be. I'm going to bring this side out. And then down here, I'm going to just use the very end of it. And if you can't get them thin enough, you can switch to a different brush. Use a liner brush or something like that. I'm just going to do these little fuzzy, fuzzy ones down here. There, and then these ones here, just using that corner edge of my brush there we go this one didn't have any really so I'm gonna not have to add to them some some weird people are suggesting to put tomato in it oh good so yep I, I may have to try that I might have to Avocado's block good I might have too. to block them <laughs> and chat there <laughs> Mark's not a tomato fan, but I am, so I'm with you. Oh, good thing, because we're going to have like a million tomatoes here in a few weeks. Yes, I am. <laughs> we are. <laughs> we planted, I don't know what I was thinking when we planted. We've got this vertical garden thing that has like, what, six tiers or something Five like tiers. that? Five tiers. And each tier has like six opens, openings. Mm. And so when we planted our tomato plants, we planted multiples of each kind of tomato seed. You know, we just seeded in a bunch of tomatoes um, to see what came up. And for some reason, the little tomatoes, I planted six of each variety. I have these like tiny tomatoes. And so I had six seedlings of those. And so I planted them in both rows. So I have two, I have 12 Cherry tomatoes. <laughs> they're mini cherry tomatoes, so they're not going to get real big, but they're mm. they're about that big each. Like, they're getting really big. And each one has got to have two dozen easily blossoms mm -hmm. on it. They're very happy. They are, they are going nuts. They love that planter. And, oh, my gosh, they're all going to come due at the same time, too, because they, they're determinate. So they're... And anyhow, I'm talking tomatoes. Nobody cares. <laughs> anyhow, it's just I'm excited. But at the same time, I'm a little terrified because I'm like, what am I going to do with like 500 cherry tomatoes when they all come? <sighs> I'm going to have to give them to everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Neighborhood. Okay. So I used a little bit of this brown, added some yellow oxide over here and some burnt, uh, some of the unbleached titanium. And I grabbed in. It really doesn't matter. Honestly, that's one thing that... You, uh, as long as you kind of get the values right, you can use whatever colors you want. This color is just kind of a neutral brownish yellow. That's all I'm doing. And I added a little bit of white, so I wanted a little bit of the lighter and the darker um, colors here. I'm going to use it. And don't worry about the center stem. I can put that back in. So I'm going to just, I just mainly want this color to be dark enough that I can see it against the background. So, and, um, Honestly, if we were using watercolors, I might I might do this lesson again with watercolors because I think I would approach it a lot differently, and it might be a little bit easier. But um, but we'll no, we'll save that for another time. So I'm gonna use a little bit of the darker color 
around the outside edges. I'm just going to kind of tap in along those edges in the same direction that I just did. While that paint's wet, it'll kind of blend in a little bit. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of the brown and that yellow or that. And I'm just going to kind of tap in these stripes, try to get those in. Since this is a lighter color, we kind of have to do it while this while this is wet, it'll be a little easier, I think, to do it now than later. So again, kind of though, try to kind of run that tip of the brush in the direction of the feather. And if you mess this up, you can do it solid. Just do it in solid. And then you can always add your stripes later. So uh, that's one thing. I just, I really want this to be um, enjoyable. So don't stress out if yours is not looking exactly like mine. It's going to be your version of a feather. So it doesn't have to be exactly like mine. Mine's not the only way to do this. If I did this two or three times, they'd all look different. So, um, you know, just keep that in mind. Your handwriting is different than mine. Your painting is going to look a whole lot different than mine. It's just normal. It's natural. That's doesn't mean that you're doing anything wrong. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna over here. Burnt sienna will just add a like red reddish tone to oh, that's pretty. Okay, just kind of mainly want that kind of fuzzy edge to happen. And this one again has kind of got a smooth bottom, <laughs> baby, baby bottom here. Yeah. Doesn't have the doesn't have the little fuzzies happening. I'm gonna go ahead and use this color, this kind of yellowish, with a little bit of the um, uh, reddish in, and I'm gonna use it in this feather here. And I'm gonna put my little stripes in this feather. Now that this is kind of dry, this is the color that we're gonna be using here. So again, when I'm pulling these, um, I'm pulling them in the direction that that feather is going. So on this side, I'm not going to be pulling it in this direction, right? Because the feather is going this way. So when I do my stripes over here, I'm going to be pulling them in the direction that I'm seeing those this way. I just did it the wrong way. <laughs> like, don't do it that way here. Let me show you how not to do it. <laughs> Um, do it in the direction that that feather is pointing and that way it'll look natural. Um, even if it's not exactly matched up with what you've got in there, it'll at least be kind of in the right general direction. So do that. And then these are all kind of wacky. So they're all kind of just different, different uh, patterns. In here, kind of zigzag. I can use this to kind of highlight some of these feathers in here too. If you want them to be more noticeable, you can add more white to them if they're not showing up against your color really well. And I'll probably add a little bit more color to, um, to them. I just went outside the boundary. Don't want to do that. I'm going to wipe that off there, get a little bit more. And that reason that that happened is because I did that entire feather with just one load of brush. And what was happening was there wasn't as much paint on my brush. And so it wasn't coming off. And instead of adding a little bit of water and a little bit more paint, I pressed down a little bit harder. And that's what will happen if you, um, you know, so just kind of Think about that when you're doing it, you get going and you stop, you don't stop to realize that you haven't reloaded your brush. You know, it, it happens to everybody, me included. So just grabbing a little bit more of that darker brown here, putting that in between some of these. We just mainly want to leave, I don't know if you can tell there, you can see just a little bit of those streaks from that original feather and then I can go back over some of these and add a little bit of the darker in there if I need to. Keep it fairly simple. Let's go ahead and add just a little bit of color to this one on this side and get some of that. 
brown, maybe a little bit darker than what I had on this side. I'm going to add a little bit of it here. And this is starting to get a little sticky. That means it's drying, so I can't do a whole lot yet. I'm going to have to wait for it to dry a little bit more. Let that dry. And let's do this one with kind of a little bit of, I'm seeing kind of almost a purple color. So I'm gonna get a little bit of this magenta and blue and add that to my brown over here. So I still want it to be brown, but I'm just gonna have just a hint of purple undertones in that color. Just give it a little bit of a different tone. There we go. Again, make sure that you're adding enough water so that it's fluid enough. And then this one has got the white stripes, quite a lot of the white stripes, so not the band, the <laughs> <laughs> although Jack Black or Jack White is awesome. They're pretty good. I've seen him in concert twice. Um the other subject, sorry. Don't get me on music. <laughs> <laughs> Do not. This music and brushes I could talk has been about. Tough. Huh? This pandemic thing has been it's tough. It's been horrible for those who like to go to festivals like I do. I usually go to a festival with my friend Margaret every spring, and we missed out this year. Yeah, no fun. Oh, well. I'd much rather be safe than sorry though I'm glad they canceled them not worth it okay yes yeah, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and do this whole one and then I'm just going to add the white on top like I did over here I think that's probably going to be the easiest way of doing it I could try to paint around the white spots but I just don't think it's going to turn out so I think this will be the easiest way of doing it Bring this out a little bit more than my drawing. I didn't bring my drawing out very much. And the, the sides of this one feather are pretty solid. I'm ending up with little fuzzy edges. So Filbert Granier does, I can do, I can do a little bit with that one and show you the difference with it, but it's basically going to be the same. It's very similar to the, this, what this fan brush is doing. So if you want the smoother edge using, pulling it from the outside in is going to be the best, but this is working a lot better than the outside other edge was, but I don't mind that fuzziness. So I'm just going to leave it. So it's your painting. You can do whatever you want with it. You can change it. You can move them around. You can do the same feather for all three or all five, I should say. Um, you could do them on three canvases. So do like a triptych of three on like the, the, the reason why I've been wanting to do this, truth be told, is because my hairdresser and I haven't been there forever and I need to, but she has this painting in her lobby um, that's this three canvases of feathers and they're very similar style to this um very loosely painted and um i've just been like every time i see that i'm like i want to paint that so <laughs> i'm like finally like i'm just gonna do it sometimes i do that it's i've voted i've i've i have my my facebook group vote on what i'm gonna paint um my Patreon group, the $10 level group, they get to vote on what we're painting next month. And that's, they, they do it every month. I uh, do a poll in there and I'm going to do the white and a little bit of the off white there, the unbleached titanium, both again, adding lots of water and my glazing medium. But anyhow, I've put the feathers, these feathers in like multiple times and they never do very well in that poll, but I'm like, I don't care. I'm going to paint them. <laughs> it's one of the, 
It's just, I don't do that very often. I always like, but, and usually those videos don't do very well. So I may be the only one that's into this, but uh, sometimes you got to do what you got to do, you know? <laughs> do what you like. Yep, exactly. All right. So these, uh, these stripes are going downwards, but the feathers are going upwards. So I'm going to angle it down just a little bit and then pull in the direction that I'm seeing them. That makes sense. So down. And they're a little bit wider on one side. So this can be kind of tricky. This is probably doing the stripes is probably going to be the hardest part. So if you don't, if you're not comfortable doing it with this brush, you can always get a small brush and we can do the same thing with the small brush and it might be a little bit easier to control so you can just do like little stripes with the small brush as long as you're paying attention to the direction that your feathers were in the reference or you know in the first layer there we can do this in fact I'm gonna use this to muss out the edges it's actually working really good there we go see do you see, Mark? Are you seeing this? Oh, yeah. I'm watching very carefully. <laughs> I'm enthralled. You're enthralled? Okay. 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 What are we painting tonight? <laughs> oh, feathers. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <clears throat> so how did you get the idea to paint those feathers? <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Do it. <laughs> so this is actually an image that I photoshopped, so I was pretty proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do a whole lot of Photoshop, but my um, my new tablet makes it a lot easier because I can use a pen with it. So it's got a pen attachment, so I can do fancier stuff with my Photoshop than with my mouse. So we got a question out here. Okay. And the question is, in general, how do you make colors more vibrant, like blue? Is using a titanium white or something like that? Or okay. so basically in general. That's a good question. Well, so what um, what happens with paint when you add white to it, it will the, it'll dull the colors. It, it it takes down the vibrancy. So it saps the um, the saturation of the paint a little bit. Um, so Glazing is your best bet. So what happens is, and I'll do it on paper here, and you can see what I'm talking about. Hopefully it'll work. <laughs> God, I love it when I do an example and it doesn't work. No pressure. So It's just live. Uh, oh, okay. So, oh, let me see. I need a dark background. It only works if it, I'm showing you on a dark background. Let me find it. Okay, here we go. Here's some old um, things. So, oh, no, no, no. I don't want blue. Though I don't want it to be blue to start with. Let's see, I'll just have to paint a little bit of it. Sorry, my notebook's got there's a line from the other day. There we go. Let me go back to this. So, let me grab some black here. We may have to, we'll have to do this in a couple spots. So, we got black, right? Or really any color in this case, it doesn't matter what it is but we're going to want to make a vibrant color on top of it. I'm going to let that dry for a minute and we'll come back to it. Oh. To be continued. I've got to put out some blue anyway, so I'll put out some blue and some teal there. I ran out of teal too, but I don't think I need teal for anything. Oh, look what I just did. I Wait. contaminated my blue. Okay, there we go. That was not good. That was too soupy there. And when I put it down, I got color all in it. That was almost a tragedy. Um, let me see what I want to do. I do want that too, though. I want a little bit of it. Put it down here. I should have sent this to you to try. Well, I can still try it. Yeah, take it and just dry it real quick, if you don't mind. It won't take long. 
I also grabbed my colored pencils. Um, and you can use colored pencils on um, canvas, um, especially on these kind of harder, harder canvases. They work really well. Um, a softer pencil, you know, lead will work, but these are just like Prismacolor pencils. So um, I was I was thinking you could probably use these to um, do color in some of these and add some texture to some of these if you wanted to add just a little bit of a detail on top. So um, don't don't uh, don't think you have to just paint everything, every little detail in your painting. I don't know why I'm trying to erase it with the water there. It's not going to work. Um, because it it it'll it goes on top of acrylics pretty well. So of course the more textured your canvas, the the worse, you know, the worse adhesion you'll get, but um you still will work pretty well. Okay, so let's show you the 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 vibrancies, right? So I'm wanting a really bright blue feather, say. Um I'm going to if you do your If you do your straight blue on top of the black or another color, whatever, there's no light coming through. So it's just going to absorb everything. The black's absorbing all that light and nothing is bouncing back to our eye. Um, so if you want to put a little bit of white underneath first or a light color, uh, you know, with a lot of white in it and let that dry completely. And then... I'll show you the white mixed in with your blue. So say, you know, I'm like, ah, oh, this is not covering. I've got to add some white to it. I'm going to add just a little bit of white. You can keep it as dark as I, you know, if I wanted really bright blue. So I'm going to keep it as dark as I can get it. But that white, what it does is adds that, um, it'll add a barrier to that black and make it, uh, make that light bounce back a little bit more. Okay, so there's the blue with white added. Then this is almost dry. Yep, it dried pretty quick. Okay, so the far right is straight blue? This is straight blue on black. Okay. You can't even see it. It's all gone now. And then this was the white with blue. And then this is glaze over the top of white. So I'm going to take my blue, or even really straight blue. It's, the ultramarine's are already a pretty um, transparent color. You just want a little bit of that white to be able to bounce through. So, but even just having that white underneath is going to help. Even if you went on with a solid color, any any white is going to help. And you can see how much how, what a different color that is on top of the white there it's way more vibrant and that's all it has to do with is the white in the um, whites of being allowed to shine through the underneath the white is shining through and that blue that it's it's popping that color up towards our eyes so we're getting that really bright here when you mix it in with the color it it absorbs somehow it dulls the color so we've we've taken that blue, we've dulled it a little bit. Now you can put the blue on top of this color and that will bring that back up a little bit, but it not as much as if you put a much brighter um, blue on there uh, or much brighter color on, underneath. So we would have had to do our blue much more, much more white in our blue. So when I do like yellows, a lot of times you'll see me add um, a little bit of yellow to my white and um, do it like that, that's going to get you much closer when you add your blue on top. You're gonna to get a much closer, um, brighter blue than even using the, but even still, it's it's very dull. You know, it's not it's not going to be a bright, um, bright blue. And then I'm gonna, this is not dry. It needs to dry completely, but you can get, you can see what happens um, there, you know. So you can get, you can get basically the same thing by using a very light version. It doesn't have to be white. Um, as long as it's close to white and a lot of white in it. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's how you get your colors brighter. And then the more layers of glaze I add, I can get it brighter, you know, darker, deeper, um, blue, you know, if I add another layer on top of here, I can 
get it really, you know, really fairly dark up here. I'll do that, that half so you can see what I'm talking about, you know, so I can get a really deep blue. And if I did over here, it's just going to get blacker. It's going to get closer to the black because it doesn't have any white in there for really or a lot enough white in there for the Ida, your Ida, Ida or for it to penetrate back up and bounce that light through. Okay. So hopefully that was helpful to somebody. I can't the, remember who asked or why. Oh, somebody asked if uh, the blue has to be a transparent for that to work like that. It works better if it is, but it doesn't have to be. Yeah. Anytime you, it, the main thing is just having that white barrier or light, light colored barrier to the dark color so that the light can bounce back. Okay, I'm going to use my wet cloth here. Now this, that was actually good because it allowed my painting to dry enough to, so now I can wipe off my chalk. You can see what we've got here. Be careful when you wipe your chalk off. You don't want to press down too hard because this paint is not cured. So it will, and I'm just going to wipe most of this off. I don't think I'm going to need that. I'll just wing it. Famous last words. Let's see what happens. Okay, so since this pe pe petal is so um, fuzzy everywhere, I'm going to use the smaller granier. I'm going to use this uh, eighth inch filbert granier. And um, it's kind of blue. It's got that teal color. So that's what I'm, let's grab that teal. I'm going to use that with the brown. So it's going to be kind of a dark gray um, teal, a lot of a lot of the brown. So I don't want it to be teal. In this case, I'm I'm trying to keep it fairly neutral. So if you want it to be, you know, more bright blue, that would be beautiful too. And I have a feather drawing or feather painting that's very similar to this that I did with very whimsical feathers, and they were all really bright colors and weird, you know, weird patterns and stuff. So. That's available too. I think it's called five is, uh, what is it called? I can't remember now. I don't know, but you punned and I didn't even pick up on it either. What pun? Because you said wing it oh, and you're doing feathers. Gosh. I didn't mean to. So Trust thank me. you for pointing that out. Who said that? So, and I, I like <laughs> her because she doesn't like raw tomatoes either. So mm -hmm. she's now the you know, top chatter. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Claire. <laughs> so this really comes to a point right there. It's about the only one that does. And curve out. And the center part is pretty. Well, this one actually, though, does kind of have a little bit of separation all the way down to the, to the center. So that's okay. I'm just going to leave a little space in some of these. We kind of start out going upward and then some of them kind of clump together and form little clicks here. So there. I mean, I'm having to reload because it's a smaller brush. So I'm having to reload almost every time I do a, a um, line here. So this right in here is going to be kind of our whitest spot. I'm going to go ahead and bring these out just a little bit more. And then as they come down here, they start to taper back down a little bit. 
Oh. The lady that, or the, well, I shouldn't say, never mind. I'm not going to say it <laughs> because I can't. Never mind. I'm not going to, I just probably almost ruined it for somebody. Oh, yeah. I watched music. We um, won't do that. The music. Just goes. stop. Just stop. La, 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 no, la, la, la. no, no, I know, but the person that I wanted to win won, so I was really happy last night. I don't know why it made me think of that. Oh, do they pick a winner? Mm. So I went to bed and yeah, they, they, they did last the, really yeah, it was the final, yeah, that's the finale. Oh, well, okay, I thought it was the final thing, I didn't it, know they were gonna pick the winner. winner. Yeah, yeah, oh man, yep. Yeah. Well, you're going to have to tell me later then. Okay. Oh, it's the person that you wanted? Mm-hmm. Oh, excellent. I know who that is. Yeah. I know I've forgotten to tell you. So. You're, you're welcome. That's why I mentioned it, but then I... You're welcome, everybody, for talking in code. <laughs> <laughs> well, now they'll have to figure out what show we were talking about. Oh, I really like this color. This is a really interesting, subtle color. So we've got the kind of more yellow tone. We've got the two sort of brown with yellow. Well, and then the kind of more purpley color. It's very s subtle shadings, but I'm liking these. And I'm going to add some white to these ones down here and do the little fuzzies with a little bit more white. Just have to be dark enough for you to be able to see it against that background color. So here we go. We got a question. Yep. Somebody would like to know, does it take more water to make the fine lines? Yes. When you're using, yes, it does. Yes. You have to, you have to have your paint fluid for the fine lines to come out. Especially if you're using a round brush or, a, or liner or something like that. And that's why I added water to these um, when I use the fan brush, too. You have to have it. The paint has to be fluid. Or it just won't come off the brush. The thicker paint just kind of will stick to the brush. And that's why I was saying, like, when I, when I got that little spot over here where I got out of the line, I had to erase it, is because my paint brush was dry. And the paint had dried, and I, I didn't have enough of the fluid paint left on my brush and it wouldn't come off and so i was pressing you end up having to press down harder to get the paint to come off your brush and then you end up with a thicker line than you intended it to be there we go oh fun i'm gonna make this one a little bit wider just so i see the reference photo is just a little bit farther out like out to here fun 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 then your daddy takes your deep bird away oh geez <laughs> Mark Anderson. What? Was that a pun? Stop. <laughs> okay. And I'm just going to use kind of some of this lighter color over the top of the darker feathers and just add a little little highlights here there. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just kind of wherever you think you might good. Kind of leave the area around the stem or the the center a little bit went dark. You can always add the dark in later if we need to, if you did get it too light. Okay, there we go. Really pretty. Okay, I need to speed this up. I'm going slow. Some of the yellow oxide now, and pretty much full strength yellow oxide. And I'm going to do the feather detail on this one. Again, just paying attention to the direction that I'm seeing. And since this is a darker color, we can do that. So then the white underneath. Try to. 
keep it in the same part of the feather. It's kind of tricky when they're split. So kind of just pick a thicker spot of it and then do like that. Okay, and then there's a little bit of this color at the very tips too. What? Somebody asked, is it tonight that we announced the winner to the giveaway? Oh, oh my gosh, I didn't do that. We, we forgot all about it. We forgot all about it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I guess oh, I guess I have to do it. I guess um, Marina wins since she, she mentioned it to us. <laughs> Who yeah, I totally forgot. Oh my gosh. No, we completely forgot about it. I'm going to call here, call Brendan, and have him pick winners right now. Does he know how to do it? Yeah, he can do it. He's got all the access to it. He's got all the, because he's got the emails and everything. He, he, cause the, I I thought about it earlier today when I very first got up and I'll go, oh yeah, I gotta do that today. Totally forgot. Oh my gosh. I've been packaging bingo winners and I just I'm so sorry. We'll we'll uh, see if Brennan's available. He's my social media guy. He helps me with my newsletter and all these kind of things. He did the post for Frederick, so he has access to all that. He should be able to do while we're finishing this up. Oh, gosh. So funny. Glad you ever said that. Thank you. Did you get a hold of him? So you've got to pick a, two winners on Instagram and, and the one winner out of the YouTube names. The YouTube email thing, Liz. I usually do a number generator. I, there's a random number generator thing. And then I count through the posts. Yes, there'll be two winners and one from the YouTube email thing that we sent out. So I can I cannot believe it. If he doesn't know how to do it, I can do it. Yeah, I'll just do it later. And I'll contact them by email or by email and I'll mention it next next video if he doesn't know I, I'll just do it I'll just do it and contact okay so did the yellow down the center oh these are turning out so pretty I love this and I'm going to do some more of the yellow on the sky too because these ones turned out now that we've got the little bit lighter color on there, we can put this color on. It'll be a little bit vi more vibrant over the top of that lighter color, just like it was with that blue. I cannot believe I've got that. I hate when I do that. This is what happens when I have like literally one other thing to do during the week. <laughs> I, we did we did bingo last week and I've been trying to mail packages all the last couple of days and fighting the post office's uh, mail, online mail thing. And then the mail lady said she came to pick up our packages. I got a thing saying, you know, yeah, your packages got picked up. And then I went out and looked down my front porch and they weren't picked up. I'm like, Ugh. so anyhow, just had a distracting day, I guess. Apologize. We will, for sure, we'll have winners. We'll announce them today and I'll send out the emails tonight if we don't get them done right now. And I'll mention it on Saturday too, so you get your name. They're winning Frederick's canvases. We did a canvas giveaway with Frederick, so. All right, so there's the yellow. So, so did he say he could do it or no? 
You're going to try. Okay. Try to guess the names here shortly. Okay. The Instagram has one friend that wins with them, too. I don't know if he knew that. But he did to pick. He doesn't have to pick the friend, right? He, yeah, he has to pay attention to what the post says, because in the post it'll have the name of the friend that they have mentioned. So I'll have to make sure that I have both of those. All right, let me get, I'm going to get, oh, I, for, I keep forgetting to use the burnt orange. This is what I wanted to use, the burnt orange. But the burnt tuna, and actually the burnt orange may be, too vibrant. I think it's going to be a little too much. So maybe burnt sand would be a better color. Just tone it down just a little bit here. Add a little bit for the color. Some of these spots here. Okay. Oh, I didn't do my white spots on this side. Got to talking about the other giveaway and I forgot to do my spots on this side. So they go in a V kind of shape, sort of in between. Use some of this color in here to separate out the feathers. Anywhere that you feel like you need a little separation in the feathers. Maybe get a little bit of this with the blue or the brown, I mean. A little highlight color. Use a little bit of it over here to highlight some of these feathers. Come on. So it's getting, it's too thick. That's what happened there. It's getting clumpy when it is not thin enough. So I just need to thin it out a little bit. And I haven't sprayed my paints at all. Just spray them, keep them moist. Okay. Do you know if acrylic paint will stick to a vinyl record. Mm. You could use um you could use clear gesso to to um if you want to paint on a record and you want to leave part of the label, then you may you could probably tape it off, tape off like tape off the label part um really carefully. You'd have to make sure that you um, didn't tear the label obviously but then you could you could just get a spray um, a spray um, primer and use that and then or you can use like a clear gesso if you want some of that black record to show through clear gesso is not per perfectly clear it will cloud it a little bit but it'll still be close enough and then you can paint your object on it or you can paint, like if you have, you know, just like a symbol or something that you're going to put on it and you know that the borders are really easy to paint over, then you could paint the gesso, even just use regular gesso and just paint that outline onto the record and then paint over the top. But I would gesso it or seal it or prime it somehow because um, it, it'll it stick to it, but it won't stick that well, probably, I would say, since it's plastic, um, plastic and acrylics don't do all that well together generally, just as a rule of thumb. I've not found them very easy to glass, plastics, things like that. They will paint on them, but they'll chip off really easily. Um, so... I was bringing a question, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it's a. They asked when people ex 
do you know why when people paint a still life, Mm -hmm. they put a tape measure with a jar of pickles? And I have no clue. I mean, I don't know why they would put a shawl next to a bottle, but it worked. (laughs) Are they talking philosophically about the composition? Yes. Well, yeah, I think about the composition. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just darkening up that little area right there. I'm going to add a little bit more of this blue here. A couple spaces. You just want to make sure that your feathers have a little bit of, you know, value change. So there's a little bit of the lighter colors in places and a little bit of darker, just so that they have a little bit of, you know, depth. Um, It doesn't have to be super detailed, but um, you can see I'm just kind of adding little bits of in doesn't even have to be the original color I'm adding. I'm using blue here from this other feather because I liked it. Yeah, I'm going to add some of that darker color to the outside of this one. Okay. Maybe use some of the darker brown here. A little bit of a burnt umber here. Maybe a little bit of the burnt sienna with it. I'm going to use it with this brush and it's thinned out. I'm just going to kind of do the outside edge of some of these feathers here. Add a little bit of a shadow. Make sure that I've got a little bit of a Good, a good um, visual on this feather here because it's so light. Make sure that the outside, I've already kind of done this side. I had done the other side. Just a little bit darker there. I'm going to use some burnt sienna here with the... And I'm getting fussy here so I can stop at any time really that I want to. I'm just adding lots of colors here because I like it. Mark's laughing because he knows this is par for the course for me. Okay, so let me do this. I'm going to take my small round here and get my, this color here. This is the color that we used over here. I'm going to get some of the yellow oxide and brown. it's got brown in it. It's got a little bit of blue in it. It's got a lot of, a lot of colors. And I just want it fairly light. And I'm going to... Um, actually, I need to do the dark first. I'm going to do the dark color first again one more time, and I'm going to go ahead and use like a burnt umber this time for it. And now that we've got our feathers painted in, we're going to need to go over these, the center line, because you've probably covered it completely. If it's anything like mine, probably mostly got covered. Then I'm going to take some of that lighter color and start about. Mm, Maybe right in here somewhere. Very, very, very thin line. Very thin. Going right down the center of that dark quill. And then when I get down here, I'm going thin, thicker. I'm going to go thicker right here. But I'm going to leave a little bit of that dark showing. And I'm going to just gradually... This is probably the hardest part of the whole feather. It's just that little line there. Take your time with it. Make sure you're thinning out your paint really well. Use a small brush if you need to. You can also you can also use that angle brush that you used at the very beginning if you want to, if you prefer that. But I think it for this it just it's a little bit easier. And you also don't have to do it in one long line like I'm doing. Like I'm doing it fairly quick because I'm comfortable with using a liner brush. But if you're not comfortable with using a liner brush, and this is kind of, you know, new to you, um, I'm going to use make a little bit of a blue here. Just use some of that color. So for this one. Um, 
So again, thin, thin out your paint. So I can just go in small sections. I'm holding it really close and I'm only going to touch the tip down. So I want it to just barely, and I'm resting my hand right onto my canvas. So I've got a good support and I'm just going to slide and I'm going to practice this so that I know that I can do it. I'm not moving my brush at all. I'm pivoting from my elbow. So my the only thing that's moving is my elbow. And so you want to kind of make sure that you, what? So the scream is two winners with two friends. No. Oh, one, one winner and one friend for each, but there's two winners total. Oh. So there should be four names. Yes, Instagram should have a friend. Each one of those so winners should have a friend. And a friend for each one of the winners, okay. Yes. But the U YouTube winner is what? Did they give a name? They didn't put a name? We only did the email? I just have email. Oh, shoot. We didn't have them put their name. Oh, well, that's not good. Yeah, we don't want to give out emails. Well, we don't have to say the whole thing, but... Just keep going. <sighs> Okay. We we got emails. Oh, okay, and yeah, we didn't really plan that very well. This one with yellow. Let's see. This one's kind of some sort of blue too. So there's four winners from Instagram. Right. And one Instagram and one winner from YouTube. Yes. Total of five. Yes. And he can post those, tell him to post that on Instagram. Okay. The winners names. And and in the in the original post. I should not have done bingo and giveaway at the same week. That was a bad idea. I was just too distracted. I can't. Okay. So this one, I'm going to do a little bit of yellow. A little darkish yellow first. There we go. What's the matter, hon? My spelling is atrocious. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I thought something went wrong. You were like, oh, my God. No, it's no. Like, oh. When I tried to type Instagram, I thought it was in Stratham. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it? What was, what I, was I trying to type the other Stratham. day? And that it was, it was, it was autocorrecting to something really weird. I can't remember now. Okay. You didn't got a little autocorrect. So do we want to just say the... He doesn't have a name for the Insta for the YouTube. And then I'll ask. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That one got a little bit thick, so I'm going to see if I can get it off. There we go. Just try that again. Keep it thin. So we can at least give the Instagram okay. winners, right? Because they're just... Well, we don't usually announce those on YouTube. 
Oh, okay. Check. But I can. I don't, I we mean, don't, there's no. No, we don't have to. No. Uh, who, who is it? Well, we only have one of the winners and their friend right now. Okay. He's getting the second. Okay. Well, who's the first winner? The first winner from Instagram is Lizard Newtonium. At Lizard Newtonium. Sweet. And they're... Burnt Sienna there. What? And their friend. And their friend is You Go Girl. Love it. <laughs> You underscore go girl with two eyes and girl. Okay. I'm doing yellow on this one. do the white on this one so I can do that really quick so the YouTube we don't have the we don't have the names not yet please stand by okay your call is important to us be answered in the order two hours here okay so he only has the email of the YouTube winner oh okay <clears throat> so if your email starts with garden goof I won't give the the rest of it. You're a winner. Maybe. Yes, you are. Well, no, because I mean, I didn't give them the the at. Oh right. So it could be yeah. at, at you know. Yeah, hopefully there's not more than one garden goof that from different entered, ads. Entered. <laughs> right. And then the second winner. We'll contact you after the show. The second winners, or. Yes, from uh, Instagram is mm -hmm. Tracy L. McCain. Yay. And the winner, Tam McCain. Sweet. Congratulations. So congratulations to all the winners. And, uh, Pretty sweet. In the coming days, we'll coordinate with... Uh, Fredericks and get you your canvases sent Yes. Out. Win a case of canvases. Not too shabby. No, pretty awesome. These would actually look really cool on those canvases, too. So it's actually really... All right, so then I'm going to go again on the inside of what I just did and do even more highlight on just a few areas in with a brighter white. And uh, what size liner brush are you using right now? This is a zero. Round. It's not a liner. Liner, it's round. And can you mix something to get Indian yellow? Uh, Let me look at my cheat sheet here. I'm trying to think. It's close to quinacridone um, gold, Nicolazzo gold. But, um, I mean, if you have cadmium yellows, those are pretty, pretty bright you could probably get something similar with a quinac with a cadmium yellow and cadmium orange or something maybe just a little bit of orange but okay i'm gonna go back now over the top add a little bit of yellow over the top of that white <coughs> and then the rest of the prices are either already been sent or on their way yeah the paintings i am i'm late on so if you want a painting i uh, in bingo i'm sorry i still haven't contacted you but i am i am getting those ready i just haven't varnished them i need to varnish them unless you don't care about varnish and i'll be i'll be happy to send them as is 
but I, I, you'll want to varnish them yourself if you if I don't do it. So. Okay, I think I'm gonna call that good. Now we could go, you know, fancier and add some shading and things like that, but I think that uh, for for our purposes we're good. And then let's. Um, Go ahead, I need to stop. I, I forget, like this was supposed to be beginner and I keep like mm -hmm. adding a lot of details, so sorry. So I still there. think though that, that the main thing, like I said, you can do the, you can simplify. You don't have to do the stripes. And um, you know, if you just practice on paper with your lining, you could use a pencil for your lining. It may not, you, you'd probably have to use uh, like a marker pen, um, you know, something that, uh, this is Molotow acrylic ink pen you could use something like that and then like glaze back over it because it'd probably be a little bit thick bright um you need a thin one i'm going to use blue ultramarine blue and brown to do my splatters on top and this time i'm going to go a little bit thicker and kind of keep them thicker can even, if I want these really big drips, can add more water. Just be careful, because this can get sloppy, so you might practice it. There we go. Add as many of these as you want, really. It's up to you. Or as few. Splatter, splatter, splatter. Um, if you get one and you really hate it, you can get it off with a paper towel if you kind of tap it off uh, with a damp paper towel. Right? And I just use my finger up underneath. And, like, you don't want any that are getting on top of anything structural. So, like, that one was right on top of the, the center line. So I didn't really want it there. Um, that one too, maybe. But I can not do them on top of, of the feathers much. I like I'm letting it be on top of them a little bit, but for the most part I want them to be on the outer areas. And then you can dab them off. If you dab them off while they're still wet, they'll get this little halo ring around them. Let them dry for just a little bit and then dab off and they um, they have a really cool effect. They look like a little ring of color right here. Let's see some, but I think I'm gonna leave these ones and let them dry the way as is. So there we go. Got some super chat. Yes, we have some super chat. Sweet. Uh, so apparently you have some in PayPal from Laura. Oh, thank you, Laura. And then also we had a super chat from Mrs. Holmey. Thank you. So thank you very much, Mrs. Holmey. Aw. Appreciate it. All are too sweet. Thank you. We appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, thank Ooh, goodness we're done fans. so I can go make my ma mac and cheese. No, grilled what? cheese. Grilled cheese. Sorry. No, mac and cheese. Get it right. Yeah. But that was fun. And you mentioned that you did a, a another feather painting. Yeah, I have one that's kind of more whimsical colors. So they're kind of dots and dabs and, and uh, like teal green and other colors like that. So, yeah, that's. Um, you should be able to find it in the three or four hundred channel uh, video. Uh, she's got in your channel, if, you, so. if you type in Angela Anderson feather, it'll come up. It'll come up on YouTube. So Angela Anderson Feather and uh, and then what did you use to sign the painting with? That was uh, my Pigma Sakura pen. Pigma. Let me. I'll get it here in a second. I'm just adding some bigger dots. Just um, Pigma FB Fine Brush FB Sakura is the brand. 
S A K U R A. These and uh, these you can get these um, at Blick um, in the link down in the description. Also on Amazon, I have a beginner supply list and this and the sponge that I used and several of the brushes that I used are in that list. So um, you can check that out too if you want to. Um, so yeah. All right. Thanks guys for watching with us tonight. It was really fun. Mm -hmm. Hope you try it. Um, it. Like I said, I don't really feel like it was as hard as it looks. It's, it's not a super difficult, as long as you have the right brush and kind of just take your time and, you know, do what I was doing. Um, I really feel like uh, you can, you can do this. It's not, it's, pretty oh, yeah. forgiving for sure and um you can always like leave your background um and and paint around any mistakes that you get you know so if you don't do like the fancy background um it's a little bit easier like if you did like a, a solid color then you could go back in with that color if you make a mistake on your um feather but even if you do make a mistake like you saw several times where i wiped it off with the clean towel so um also, if you don't stop in the middle and do a tutorial on how to do bright color painting, it'll take you a little less time, too. True, true. But, you know, in case your kids want to know, you might, you know how to do that now, too. <laughs> you zoom out so you can see the whole thing. <laughs> there we go. All right. Thanks, guys, so much for watching. We'll be back Saturday. Yeah, we'll be back Saturday with another video. What are we painting Saturday? I don't know. No you don't have a list? Somewhere? I do. I can't see it right now. It's covered up by my... Covered by stuff? Refer. Let me see. Uh, we're painting... Oh, is it the seahorse? Yes, it is. Ooh. Yay. Oh, yeah. Seahorse. Fun. So after this, just click on Angela's name, go over to channel, and hit the reminder on that. We'll yeah. be back Saturday. Yep. All right. Love Thanks, it. guys. We'll see you then. Bye. <laughs>